Monster Hunter Rise is one of the most user-friendly Monster Hunter games out there, but if you want to take on the toughest content effectively, you're going to need a build fit for taking on the deadly monsters. So I'm Darkblade with some awesome builds for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter Rise. Now these are builds that I personally like to use in the game. They may not be the most meta out there, but they are aimed for taking on the majority of content Monster Hunter Rise has to offer. For this series, I'll be featuring between 3 and 4 builds for each of the various weapons, which should cater to a variety of playstyles. Now when it comes to the Switch Axe, it's a weapon that has got a lot of love in Monster Hunter Rise. An excellent weapon capable of dishing out a ton of damage to monsters, its main downside comes in the form of managing its switch gauge and its lack of mobility. However, with the introduction of wire bugs and silk by moose, these downsides rarely hold the weapon back from reaching its full potential anymore. So for the most part, the builds I use for the switch axe are DPS focused with a few quality of life skills added to them. So the first build is the Elemental DPS Switch Axe build. This build combines raw damage and elemental damage to best take on monsters, so you need to take into account a monster's elemental resistance. On top of that, this build has a few quality of life options that does support the Switch Axe overall, and it can easily be interchangeable with various other elemental Switch Axes in the game, so long as you're using element file Switch Axes. So for this build you'll need the Kaiser Crown, Jiritoda's Mail, the Raphalos Braces S, the Anjanath Coil S and the Golden Hakama. I'm also using an Absolute Petalace, although to be honest when it comes to the Petalaces these are kind of down to personal preference. And then when it comes to the Talisman, to be honest these can be dictated to what you have available to you, so you may not be as lucky here as I am. I'm using a Talisman that has Divine Blessing level 3, Recovery Up level 1, a Tier 3 Decoration slot and a Tier 1 Decoration slot. All of the skills involved with this talisman though are quality of life skills so they can easily be replaced if you so wish. As for the weapon, I'm using the Doombringer Axe. This is the Almadron Switch Axe. So we're going to be using a water build. If you wanted to use a different element, then I'd recommend using Amber Horfrost, which is the Baryoff Switch Axe if you wanted an Ice Switch Axe build, the Nashin Flamen Bell, which is the Anjanath Switch Axe if you wanted a Fire build, Undying Light, which is the Rajang Switch Axe if you wanted a Thunder build, and finally, the Red Nought Donat, which is the Valstrax Switch Axe. The reason I'm suggesting these is because they all contain at least a tier 2 decoration slot, which you kind of need for this build to work. As for the Rampage skills, go with something to either increase your raw attack or elemental damage. With this build and the Almadron Switch Axe, I've gone for Element Exploit. So when it comes to the decorations, you've got a few to play around with, and some of them are pretty optional. So, I've gone for Tenderizer Jaws to max out Weakness Exploit, a Steadfast Jaw to max out Stun Resistance, Brace Jaws for a point in Flinch Free, a Sated Jaw which is completely optional for a point in the Free Meal skill, Stream Jaws to max out Water Attack. Of course, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you replace these Stream Jaws to match whatever new element you were using. And then finally, an Enhancer Jaw to max out Power Prolonger. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 211 raw attack, with a water rating of 54. You have blue sharpness with 15% base affinity, which can be 65 when you take into account weakness exploit, with element files. And you have a strong defense of 455 that is exceedingly strong against fire, but unfortunately slightly weak to the other elements. As for the switch skills, these are kind of down to personal preference. Rarely will a build require you to have a specific switch skill. If it does, then I will mention it in the build, but for the most part, Go with whatever you fancy and suits your personal playstyle. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have Water Attack at level 5. Water Attack is a skill that increases the water rating and damage of a build. Of course if we were using a different weapon with a different element we would replace Water Attack to match whatever new element we were using. So say we were using a Thunder weapon it would be Thunder Attack instead of Water Attack. Anyway, you have Attack Boost at level 4. Attack Boost is a skill that increases the raw damage of a build, and at level 4 or above it also grants us Attack Percentage Increase. You have Critical Eye at level 3. Critical Eye is a skill that increases the base affinity of a build. You also have Critical Boost at level 3. Critical Boost is a skill that whenever we crit a monster, will deal increased damage to that monster. But this only applies to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental portion. It would have been nice to have Critical Element in this build, but it's not as powerful as Critical Boost in Monster Hunter Rise currently. You'll then have Weakness Exploit at level 3. Weakness Exploit is a skill that increases our affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us a bonus 50% extra affinity. You have Power Prolonger at level 3. Power Prolonger is a skill that is useful for the Switch Axe. It's more of a quality of life skill rather than anything else. Basically, it increases the duration at which your Switch Axe will stay powered up. And as we're using Elemental Files and aiming to spam the Zero Sum Discharge move with this build more than perform our switching combos, this definitely helps with this build. 
You also have Divine Blessing at level 3. Divine Blessing is a useful defensive skill, which gives you a 50% chance at level 3 of taking reduced damage should you take a hit. The main reason I've gone for Divine Blessing is that when we're performing the Zero Sum Discharge move and we've attached ourselves to a monster, we can sometimes take a lot of damage. Divine Blessing helps counter and alleviate this issue slightly. Anyway, you also have Stun Resistance Level 3, another useful defensive and quality of life skill that completely negates all stun effects on our hunter. You also have Latent Power Level 1, which is a byproduct of the armor we're wearing. Latent Power is a buff that kicks in whenever we've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time. Alternatively, it also activates when we take a set amount of damage from a monster as well. When it's active, it will grant us increased affinity and reduce stamina consumption. Anyway, next up is Recovery Up Level 1, which is a byproduct of the talisman we're using. It's not too useful, but it is a useful quality of life skill that slightly increases the amount we heal when we're using healing methods such as taking a potion and such. You also have Evade Window Level 1, another byproduct of the armor we're wearing, but it's still useful. It slightly increases the invincibility frames when we perform dodges and such. You also have Evade Extender Level 1, a very useful quality of life skill for the Switch Axe. This slightly extends the distance at which we roll and dodge which is useful for countering the Switch Axe slow mobility. You also have Free Mill Level 1, which is an optional skill for this build. It gives us a 10% chance at not consuming a potion when we actually use it, so it can help when it comes to saving on materials, potions, so on and so forth. And then finally, you'll have Flinch Free at Level 1. Flinch Free is a useful skill, especially when you're playing in a group, as it prevents minor knockbacks from monsters, and especially your allies. So there we have it, that is the elemental DPS switch axe build I'd recommend. It does nicely in combining both raw attack and elemental damage, so long as you're countering the right monster. But even the best builds out there have pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its damage output. Combining both raw attack and elemental damage, you're able to take on monsters quite effectively so long as you're countering them with the correct elements. On top of that, this build has a ton of quality of life options. From Divine Blessing, Stun Resistance, Recovery Up, Evade Window and Evade Extender, these all help to the quality of a hunt, making it feel slightly more easier than it is. And then finally for the pros, is that this build is interchangeable and can be used with pretty much any element in the game, just so long as you use one of the switch axes I recommended. But unfortunately there are cons. The two biggest cons for this build include that, unfortunately, this build tends to have sharpness issues, as the switch axe can burn through sharpness really quickly. And the other con is, unfortunately, for a DPS build, this build doesn't have a ton of affinity. Normally high DPS builds have a lot of affinity, but this only just passes the 65% mark. But overall, this build is a great all-round build. It may not excel in any one area, but it has offensive options, defensive options, quality of life options, making it a great build for the Switch Axe. On top of that, it can use any element, so can be used to take on pretty much any monster, so long as you're countering them with the correct weapon. Which brings us on to the next Switch Axe build, which is my personal favourite, and to be honest, is the one I kind of use non-stop currently with the Switch Axe, which is the Dragonheart Switch Axe build. This build is an incredibly high DPS build, featuring the Dragonheart skill found on the Valstrax armor, combined with Resentment, Bludgeoner, and one of the strongest switch axes in the game, Grand Chaos, which is the Diablos switch axe. The main downside of this build is it lacks quality of life and survival skills, but sometimes the best defense is an exceedingly strong offense. So, for this build, you'll need the entire Valstrax armor set, which includes the Valstrax helm, mail, braces, coil, and grease. Again, I'm using the Absolute Petalace, and for my Talisman, I'm using a Talisman that has level 2 Rapid Morph, level 2 Resentment, and 2 level 1 Decoration slots. As for the weapon, I'm using Grand Chaos, which has the Dullin Strike Rampage skill attached to it. So when it comes to the decorations, you've got a fair few to use to make this build work. First of all, I'd recommend taking Steadfast Jaws, which are optional, but nonetheless they are useful. I'd then take Blunt Jaws to give us the Bludgeoner skill, as the Grand Chaos is already in green sharpness. I then recommend a quick switch jaw to max out rapid morph, drain jaws for stamina thief, and finally a critical jaw to give us a point in the crit boost skill. It would have been nice to get this higher, but unfortunately we are limited, and as we are using a weapon that already has negative affinity, and we won't be critting all the time, just having a single point in crit boost is going to be worth it. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with a raw attack of 279, with no element, with green sharpness, and exhaust files. You have minus 15% affinity, which can potentially be 35 when you take into account weakness exploit. You have a very strong defense of 546, that unfortunately is weak to every element, except for dragon, to which it's exceedingly strong against. 
As for the skills, first of all you have Resentment at level 5. Resentment is a buff that kicks in whenever you have a portion of red health on your health bar. When this happens, it will grant you increased raw attack for as long as that red health remains there. Next up is Dragonheart at level 5. Dragonheart is a buff that kicks in whenever our health reaches a certain percentage. Dragonheart at level 5 kicks in once our health reaches 80% or lower. When this happens, our hunter will contract Dragon Blight, although this is not an issue as we're using an elementalist weapon. Anyway, when this happens, whilst we have this Dragon Blight, we'll also gain two benefits. First of all, we'll gain 50 elemental resistance to all the elements in the game, and on top of that, we'll gain an increase of 10% raw attack power giving us a little bit of extra defense and greatly increasing our offense. Next up is Resuscitate at level 3. Resuscitate is a skill that kicks in, granting us increased raw attack whenever we have a Blight or ailment on our Hunter. So Resuscitate kicks in when the Dragonheart Dragon Blight is active, and this coupled with the Resentment buff, if should we have red health, means that our raw attack should skyrocket with this build. Anyway, you also have Weakness Explode at level 3. You also have Bludgeoner at level 3. Bludgeoner is a useful skill in Monster Hunter Rise, especially if you're using a weapon with a high raw attack stat and a decent chunk of green sharpness, which the Grand Chaos does. Basically, this skill grants us another 10% raw attack power when your sharpness gauge is green or lower. So again, add into our overall DPS. You also have Stamina Thief at level 3. Stamina Thief basically increases the exhaust power of this build, and as we have exhaust files on this weapon, it adds to the damage output there. Now remember that when it comes to Elder Dragons in Monster Hunter, rarely can they be exhausted. So people could argue that the exhaust files are wasted on this build, but nonetheless, when it comes to Monster Hunter Rise, exhaust files allow you to charge up your weapon a lot more quickly than, say, power files. That's the reason we are using this weapon regardless of the monster we're going up against. It can also help when it comes to KOing a monster as well. Anyway, you also have Stun Resistance at level 3, Rapid Morph at level 3. Rapid Morph is a skill very useful for the Switch Axe. Rapid Morph basically increases the speed at which our weapon switches from axe to sword form and back again. And on top of that, it will grant our Morph attacks a 20% damage increase. This means that if you're performing the combos that go between axe and sword form, should a monster give you an opportunity to perform these longer combos, these are more than likely going to be your highest damaging moves. And then finally, you'll have Critical Boost at level 1. So there we have it. That is currently my favourite Switch Axe build in the game. But even this will come with pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its raw damage output, able to bring down monsters incredibly quickly and effectively. On top of that, this build can be used against any monster in the game thanks to it being an elementalist build and focusing on raw attack rather than elemental damage. And the final pro is the Dragonheart buff itself, providing us increased defense and offense for wearing a full set of armor. But unfortunately, there are cons to this build. One of the biggest cons is that unfortunately, to activate Dragonheart, as well as some of the other abilities like Resentment, you have to put yourself at risk, which could lead to a feint. And the other con is unfortunately, this build lacks defensive skills. While she has Dragonheart does increase our elemental defense, there's nonetheless no evade extender, no evade window and more, which can sometimes mean that this build feels a little bit lacking when it comes to survivability. But like I said, sometimes the best defense is a strong offense, and this build definitely has that is able to take down monsters incredibly quickly, and like I said, it's currently my favourite and go-to Switch Axe build in the game. Which brings us on to the final build of this video, which is the budget Switch Axe build. Now when I say budget build, I mean a build that is constructed from a full set of armour, aimed to benefit the playstyle of a specific weapon, and help a player get through to the end game farm. So it's not a mixed set and it doesn't feature tons of rare decorations or anything like that. It's just aimed to help certain players get to the end game farm of Monster Hunter Rise. Now with the Switch Axe budget build, there is an armor set that is perfect for the Switch Axe, found around the mid game, which is the Almadron armor set. So for this, you'll need the Almadron Helm S, Mel S, Van Braces S, Coil S and Greaves S. Again, the petal lace is down to personal preference, but I'm using an absolute petal lace here. And the Talisman, Unfortunately, I assume as you are going through the game's story, you may not have access to a lot of talismans, but try to get something with weakness exploit on if you can, as well as decoration slots. As for the weapon, I recommend Knight's Crescent, which is the Nagakuga Switch Axe, with an attack boost rampage skill. So when it comes to the decorations, you may not have access to all of them here, but once you start working on your decoration grinder and if you're still using this build, I'd recommend a Fortitude Jewel for the Fortify skill, Evasion Jewels to max out Evade Window, Venom Jewels for the Poison Attack skill, Tenderizer Jewels to max out Weakness Exploit, Steadfast Jewels to max out Stun Resistance, and finally an Enhancer Jewel to max out Power Prolonger. 
So if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 203 raw attack with no element, with white sharpness and poison files. You have 40% base affinity, which can easily be 90% when you take into account weakness exploits, and you have a decent defense of 451 that is strong against water and thunder, but unfortunately weak to the other elements. As for the skills, first of all, you'll have Evade Window at level 5, increasing our overall defense by allowing us to dodge more effectively. You'll have Weakness Exploit at level 3, Poison Attack at level 3, which increases the poison buildup of that said ailment. And as we're using a weapon with Poison Files, this helps increase the effectiveness of these files. You'll have Razor Sharp at level 3, which is a result of the armor we're using. Razor Sharp prevents your weapon from losing sharpness 50% of the time. This should help keep the white sharpness on the weapon we're using the longer periods. You'll also have Power Prolonger level 3, you have Stun Resistance at level 3, Rapid Morph at level 3, and finally Fortify at level 1. Fortify is a skill, a buff that kicks in whenever our hunter faints. When we come back, we'll come back with 10% increased raw attack and 15% increased defense. This buff can be applied twice during any one hunt. So there you have it, that is the budget build I'd recommend for the Switch Axe. But despite being quite an all-round build, this does come with pros and cons. The biggest pros for this build include its high affinity rating, almost reaching 100%, which adds to our overall damage. On top of that, this build can be used against pretty much any monster, thanks to it being an elementalist weapon, making it great for farming and going through the story of Monster Hunter Rise. And then finally, this build comes with a ton of quality of life and defensive skills. Evade Window, Razor Sharp, Power Prolonger, Stun Resistance. These will all add to the quality of a hunt, making it feel easier than it actually is. But there are downsides. The two biggest downsides for this build include that the fact that this build unfortunately is a little bit low when it comes to raw attack, but this is kind of made up for slightly with our high affinity rating. And the other con is unfortunately, you have to get to the point where you can farm Almadron to actually get this armor set, which like I said, is in the mid to later parts of the game. If you haven't got to that point yet and you still want a high rank armor set, I'd recommend using something like the Naga Kuga armor to assist you till you get to the point where you can farm Almadron. But like I said, this is a strong all-round budget build, having defensive, offensive and quality of life options. This should allow you to get to the end game of Monster Hunter Rise and start farming for your mix sets and decoration collection. So there we have it, those are some of the builds I like to use for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter Rise. Now these builds are aimed to be strong general builds, able to pretty much take on most tasks in the game. They also may be slightly different from other meta builds found in the community and can also change depending on what charms you have available to you. But regardless, these are the builds that I personally like to use in the game and I hope they help you out in your hunts. So until next time, I've been Darblade, bringing you some amazing builds for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter Rise. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.